Happy Friday, everyone. We're so glad you're here with us again today and are finishing the week with us. I'm going to wake you up early. I want you to raise your hand if you're ready for the weekend. <laughs> we Gosh, they're, they're paying attention. We ought to get 100%. 100%. Yeah, yeah, Linda, yeah. Linda wants to keep on working. Oh, there, Linda, you just want to work all the time. <laughs> that, no, she still hasn't raised her hand, so. <laughs> Maybe she's out grabbing a cup of coffee. I don't know. But um, we're glad that you, that the weekend is here, too. We we share your passion for weekends. And, Stacia, I'm going to give you a shout-out. I hear you're wearing your um, shirt from last year, that you're wearing your shirt from Vegas. So all ready to go. We're glad you're here. And I also realized this morning that you've seen a heck of a lot of me this week. We haven't had a single Chuck sighting. So I want you to raise your hand if you want to see Chuck. There's a Chuck sighting. There he is coming up. <laughs> so there's Chuck, Chuck, Chuck. If people, there you've got your 100% of people that want to see Chuck. So <laughs> It's been fun, everyone, to spend the week with 149 of you in 53 different organizations. We are so uh, appreciative that you have participated and that you've completed those surveys at the end of each session and all the encouraging comments that you gave to us um, so we know you're taking away some good information. But we do have some homework for you. Be sure that you're on our listserv and that you're getting our newsletters. Um, the first of each week of each month we send out a notice of what learning opportunities we're offering that month and around the 15th you get our newsletter that's full of tips and tricks, a report of the month, a tech tip. And so if you're not on that, we want you to get on that. I have several people that I need to add to both lists. And if you weren't one that could add your name and you're wanting to get on that list, drop me a chat and I'll get that taken care of today. Uh, be sure to attend our monthly user webinars. They're very similar to what you've experienced this week. We have sessions on Student Manager, and we have sessions on AceWeb, and on occasion we bring in guest presenters to share some neat things that they're doing as well, and so we want you to be with us. Some topics on the horizon, we have the new and improved Quick Pick module to show you what's new there and kind of just um, demonstrate how that works. And I think Chuck has one called something like, may the F4 key be with you, or something like that. So those are things to look forward to. Attend the quarterly webinar, those update webinars. The next one's going to be on July 8th. And in those webinars, we share all of the new features that have been added to Student Manager and AceWeb, and they're demonstrated. And so those are sessions you should sit in on, too. Visit our webinar archives. Just like this week, all of our webinars are recorded and added to our archives. So take a look through those. You can attend those on demand. You can get your teams together to learn something new. And if and if there's something that's missing that you want added, send me an email. We can get that um, on our list of webinars. Most importantly, folks, stay in touch. We uh, want to know what's going on with you and with your programs. We want to hear your ideas for development. We want to know how things are going or where you're struggling so we can help you out. So stay in touch. And finally, watch your email. Next week I'll send a follow-up email with some links from the sessions and remind you of the books that have been recommended, things like that. And I'll have a more extensive survey so you can let us know how this week went for you. Before I turn things over to Chuck, I do want to give a shout-out to everybody that presented this week. It takes a lot of time to prepare a presentation and then to just, you know, present kind of to yourself it, without seeing faces in front of you can be difficult. So we appreciate the time and effort that all of these folks gave. And there's lots of things that go on behind the scenes with other team members. And I want to say thank you so much for all the help that they gave me. We're going to give away one more gift, and that is going to be a 60 to 90 minute web-based training that's customized for your team. So someone that's in the audience today will be the winner of another 60 to 90 minute webinar, web-based training, not webinar. So I think I've covered all of my housekeeping notes, and I will be turning things over to Chuck, who's going to kind of talk about things we've seen in the last, oh, three months, 
and tips and tricks that he's given to those to kind of uh, navigate the storms of this season. And I know he's going to want you to participate. So be ready to raise your hand. Be ready to type in some comments and give him some feedback. Ask your questions. He wants you to participate in this session. So, Chuck, with that, I'm going to go away and give thanks to you. Very good. Well, uh, welcome, everybody. TGIF, again, echoing Sharon's comments um, for, um, uh, you know, getting ready for weekend. Before we get into my session, I want you to give Sharon a hand. So raise your hand if you think Sharon has done a great job emceeing and hosting the hostess with the most is here. Sharon, those hands are going up. So again, wanted to give you a shout out. So, all right, guys, that's that's good. Well, let's get into business here because I, I really want to, uh, again, these ideas here are ones that I'm getting from you or I've heard from you, the customers. And so we're gonna want you to, to share with us uh, topics that, or things that you're using here that uh, others who are listening in can benefit from. Um, again, the new normal, like the Escher photograph, it just seems like you know we're going in circles and around and up and down. So we'll be trying to see if we can uh, adjust that. Um, Agenda-wise, a uh, uh, really a short agenda. The big one down there is going to be number four. We're going to be looking for tips from the trenches, your COVID war stories. Uh, you know, when I was a boy, you tell the grandkids, you know, when I was in COVID, here's what I did, you know. And so let's see if we can get some um, uh, things that I'm not uh, sharing or that I haven't discovered yet uh, that you're using that has helped you serve your students, get your programs out there. Um, one of the focuses of that is going to be working with Zoom. A lot of you are using Zoom for your um, uh, delivery of courses of, of, if you would, streaming the class. I'm going to have you raise your hand, if you would, if you have, if you are using Zoom. Raise your hand if you're using Zoom. And I'm just curious how many. How many? Lots of them, Chuck. Yep, yep. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, say I'm, 8%. I'm watching the audience here. So. Um, well, very good. Um, so we'll, we'll go through a couple examples of that that I've stolen from Mainline School Night. I believe their power went out this week and they're part of Pennsylvania, so I don't think they're on. Um, but um, I see Jill is in, so the south area of Philly must be good. Um, and we'll talk about how you can use the tools in Aceware. I talk about the latest goodies. Several of these are brand new that I think will facilitate that. And then certainly I wanna get into uh, other tips from the trenches. So um, with that, let's kind of get things going. So first of all, new normal. Um, I, I, there ain't nothing normal. And I, I, I saw this meme the other day and I thought that was pretty good. Like, let's see if we can do a do-over on that. Um, and again, uh, in terms of the normal, uh, the, uh, the sharks in the in the wheat field. Just when you thought it was safe to go outside, you know, you've got things going on. So um, the the big thing is, I think, uncertainty of of not knowing because each state seems to have some of its own rules uh, as to how we might go about continuing business. Um, we've got some thoughts on that, but again, uh, you as program managers obviously will just need to keep tuned to what the local uh, city, uh, the state, municipal rules are for how you can carry on business. And most of you with colleges and institutions, you're gonna be reading that from your administration there within the college. Um, I think obviously flexibility rules. Um, again, trying to stay as, 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 as uh, responsive as possible. Uh, and again, as part of that, um, Sharon made the shout out on that. If you've got something that all of a sudden the president of your school says, blah, 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 and you said, well, boy, I don't know how to do that in ASWR, give us a shout. Call your tech. Uh, again, you can email, but if you don't get an email response within a few minutes, give that the tech a phone call and uh, raise that up. We'll have our team jump on that with you to see if we can't 
help you figure out a way to use aceware to, to get that job done um, need for creativity and, and again that's why i'm going to be turning the spotlight on you here in a minute to uh, invite you to share so if you would while we're i'm going to share a couple of things here um, you know start thinking about again and at this point it's been two three months you might say well that's that we've been do doing that all the time but really you think of the things you weren't doing prior to the first of february that you're now doing and if that's something that hasn't been shared or you think would be a benefit to some of your colleagues um, i'm going to invite you to write that down and you can actually start writing those down right now um, as we're going through the rest of this. If you're, you're already good at multitasking because you're watching Zoom, you're answering email, you're doing that all at the same time. Need to listen, and that, that goes for you and that goes for us. Uh, for you, it's listening obviously to your students, to the people that participate in your classes, to your instructors, you know, how they're managing in this new reality. Uh, you're paying attention, as we said, to your school administration because um, your, your, your people who are getting the big bucks at your colleges should be trying to uh, do the right thing for the institution and uh, the students. And obviously, you're going to try to follow those to, uh, to serve as well. So let's jump to working with Zoom. Like I said, almost 80% of you are, are using Zoom in some form or another. And um, these are a couple of things that I wanted to reference. The idea of uh, how you can get the Zoom class information loaded into, or get that information passed on to the students who are registered in those classes. And so, I'm going to go through an example, and again, uh, this is something that uh, was done or is being done at the mainline school night. And what I did is mock up a Zoom course, okay? So number one, um, what um, they do, or what I guess we would recommend you do, is that as you schedule your Zoom class, um, you get uh, from Zoom, after you've scheduled your class, a set of dates and a download and a password uh, connection and, and a connection. Now, this particular example does not show a username and password. Um, I'm guessing, well, let me ask you guys a question. Raise your hand if you do password and username or password protected Zoom classes, or do you just send the link? because I know password protect, and I'll raise your hand if you password protect those classes. Okay, so yeah, most of you are doing that. I know there were issues uh, with, unless you password protected it, that you could have people crashing the system. And obviously, if you're still trying to charge people for the class, um, you're going to need to uh, want to enforce that. So anyway, so what they do is you copy the Zoom invite, if you would, that comes as part of the Zoom creation. And again, uh, I've done Zoom a couple of times for family gatherings. I haven't done a full setup for class. So if I'm overstating or misstating something, um, go in and write a comment to Sharon to get me corrected. But anyway, if you do that at the time you are scheduling uh, you know, when you schedule the class, I guess, before you start getting registrations and you copy that and put it in the course note. Now, again, the Zoom a lot of times has a lot of phone numbers in the one tap mobile. And again, if you want to set, you want to delete all the ones that really aren't relevant for you or just keep the one in there for like the one tap mobile. Um, you're able to edit that uh, Zoom document or that Zoom default to kind of fit the kind of data in it. And sometimes you're going to add supplemental data in here about, uh, you know, who the coordinator is or some other data. But the point is, if you do that ahead of time, before you start actually doing registration, um, then if you put it in course notes, 
and you do a registration. So I'm gonna go ahead and register. Uh, we've got Amy in here and we'll go ahead and print a fake receipt. Let me see the email, default email receipt. Okay, we've got that. So again, this particular class, now if you'll see that uh, this is an example where MSLN actually uh, added some preface on the standard email receipt. There's the name of the student, the class information, and now again, class note is not showing on that. Normal, and I, I may have in my demo example, I don't have the class note being printed on it. But if you include the class note in your email receipt, um, it will it'll be generated right here in the um, in the confirmation that that student gets, and that will be the same whether you do it from the web or whether you do it from um, the class. Now, hang on a second. Steph, I have a question here. If you're ready to yeah, take I'm, a class. I'm ready. Yeah, I was oh, trying to catch it as well. Okay, uh, the course note. This is from Rachel at in Whatcom. Since okay. the course note displays online in AceWeb, how do you make sure people don't join the Zoom meeting without registering first? Uh, okay, good point. If you've got, if you're just, okay, breathe in. If we're going to do this, what I would recommend is that you a, um, you could disable the course note on uh, the website. And so again, there's a couple of angles on that. Number one, you do have, uh, okay, so option one is that on your course description or on your course display, um, I don't know what the, what the form is on AceWeb. Um, who else is setting in here? Um, Stein. Oh, Stein. Uh, do you know? Uh, let me un unmute Stein or Stein. What is the form that they would uh, they could just take course note off? Uh, I think course status page or I think it's course status. Uh, but anyway, take that note off and so that it's not out there in the public. Um, Stacia is recommending that you could put the Zoom key in the payment receipt, and again, that's in that's in this one. Uh, and again, back to doing the mass editing of the um, of the course status page. Yes, if you turn it off on the course status page, it would be uh, shut off for all users. Now, alternatively, and again, the what you print on the confirmation receipt is editable. And like I said, I had the obviously in this demo here, I don't have the note printing. But if you say, well, I really would like to continue to use the course note to display on AceWeb because maybe you're saying, you know, uh, you need to wear a hard hat or you need to have uh, read three articles from book XYZ before you start the class, you could, if you're not using the course reminder note, you could put your um, Zoom credentials in the course reminder note and again edit your template so again um, let's jump back to the editing here uh, module catalog email templates uh, email receipt and that you would put in put into the email body uh, the course um, description that is not um, that is not the course notes now let me ask Stein if you're listening in can you use the e um, the course uh, not printed it's a co where we go c o p r t or n print the the non printing course note as a variable in a receipt I'm pretty sure you can uh, but again, you could put that note down in the comments area. Uh, the thing, 
I think Stacia recommends uh, putting it in uh, to the reminder note that is sent out at the start of a class. And that is, and I don't have one set up on this. Let me see if you stay with me. Uh, if I can get to a demo, and I can. Ace. Let's do an email reminder. This is an old uh, demo. All of my courses are inactive here. Let's make this one Ace Work Conference uh, 0609020. And we're going to make this so that we send reminders to students, one student in the class. So now if we do tools, email, student reminders. Basically, uh, that email reminder note that you would send out to people ahead of the class, uh, you could insert the class notes or the class non-printing note, wherever you store that Zoom logon information, and then that would go to the student with their class reminder. And again, you should probably do that. Um, you should be using class reminders and making sure you cross-reference that as well. Um, Jill indicates they use a PDF attachment to the receipt. Um, again, um, that's possible. Uh, certainly, if you can put a link inside of an email, uh, one of the dilemmas about PDFs or attachments is that sometimes that can get uh, issues with spam, you know, spam filters coming in. So um, again, multiple ways of attacking that. Okay, hey, Chuck, so I'm gonna, yes, it's time, yeah. go ahead. Uh, you could, you can disable those course notes on your uh, course status template, but I would think that a lot of people are depending on displaying that information, you know, if you if you disable it, then you're not going to see the notes for any courses. So that might not be a really good, a very okay. good idea or a very good place to put this this uh, supposedly uh, information right. uh, that you don't want everybody to see. Uh, the non-printing course notes, I believe you're right. I haven't verified, but you should be. That would be probably a better choice because it can fit. It wouldn't show to everybody, but you could explicitly put it into the uh, uh, confirmation email, or, or you know, um, so that might that might be a better uh, approach than just using the course note field. Right. In other words, just take this and copy it, uh, or actually, we'll cut it, and then just paste it down in here in course reminder notes. So again, uh, yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll confirm that, but I'm pretty sure that the, uh, the email receipt and the question would be, Stein, on your email confirmation from AceWeb, does that side of the house allow you to generate or to pull from this? So I'll let you check on that and you can, uh, you can jump back in uh, on there. Um, all right, so that is uh, the, the one suggestion on that. Now, Melissa says she uses the class quick report. So the send quick email to class uh, and paste that into, the, into, the, um, uh, into a notice to the class, kind of the manual quick, quick, quick email to class. So, um, all right, so that is, um, the idea of how to do the Zoom credentials. Now, the other issue uh, that uh, Mainline was having is, whoa, is having, let's get back to, sorry, I'm skipping too many skips. Here we go. Uh, using, come back. What is with the mouse? Hang on. There we go. Uh, I'll try not to click on there. Um, using room use to schedule Zoom classrooms. Now, in the case, um, I don't know how you all have done your Zoom licensing. Mainline ended up buying what the mid-range package, and I think that gives them 10 
Zoom classrooms. Uh, Zoom experts, uh, correct me if I'm misstating things, but what, um, what I believe they're using there is that um, you can only have one class or one Zoom meeting going on at a time for any single, uh, I'm trying to get Sharon my questions coming in here. Um, you can only have one Zoom session going on per Zoom license. So obviously if you're having an evening classes, you could have several different classes going on and you wanna not try, you wanna not overbook a Zoom classroom. Well, if you, you, if you actually go into your room use, your location, not room use, go into location, create a Zoom classroom for each license, then as you book a class and put it in a Zoom classroom, um, it will tell you whether or not you've got Zoom classroom one booked from eight to 10 on Friday the 5th of June. Now again, if somebody, if other folks have had any, um, if they have had any other, um, I'll spit this out, ways that you're managing the Zoom scheduling, uh, shoot that on. Um, and Stein, I'm going to ask if you can see the questions, you might want to jump in and see if some of those questions you can respond to, a lot of them have to do with uh, some of that ACE web formatting. Uh, we'll, we'll get Stein working on the side here. So, otherwise, Chuck, I, you... Chuck and Stein, this is Sharon. I am sending some questions related to ACE web to Stein through the chat panel. So be on okay. the lookout okay. for that sign. I know he can. Yeah, I, 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 I got it. Got okay. Yeah, and um, sign as an organizer, you could. Oh, panelists, you may not be able to see the questions. I guess so. Anyway, um, all right. And no. Uh, okay. Nobody has. Um, uh, Rachel is saying she puts the schedule into the. Um, spit this out, Outlook calendar. And again, so you can use the calendaring, calendaring system. However, like I said, if you kind of build that into uh, AceWeb just through the Zoom location, uh, then I think you'd have an opportunity to try to manage that from inside. Uh, and again, I think as, as I remember um, at, um, at uh, Mainline, they assign a staff member to host the Zoom classroom for every single class going on, or to at least initiate it, you know, launch it and start it. And they actually have tied to, they have tied, here we go, lo location view, here we go. They have actually tied to the location, host is Amy, uh, say she's going to be hosting classroom two, and then classroom three, the host is going to be Kathleen. I'm sorry those guys aren't able to see they're getting all these shout outs. Uh, but that way they can also kind of keep track internally of which staff members are going to be launching that Zoom classroom when it's, when it's ready to go at eight o'clock on, on Friday morning. So that's already done now. So. Um, all right, so again, anybody have any other thoughts on the Zoom element? Zoom element. I'll share some comments that we're seeing here. Rachel, Rachel did Rachel. ask, as we talked about um, using course notes with, I think, which I think we've said may not be the best idea, she asked if kind of unchecking that course notes option from displaying from the web is universal or class by class, and Stein has said that's that's kind of a universal thing, so it's all or nothing. But I think we've come up with some better ideas anyway. Um, just shout outs on liking the room use idea. You've already mentioned the Outlook. Um, some people send the link from Quick Reports. Melissa sends the link to Zoom from Quick Reports after everyone is registered. Some send it the day before class. So lots of different things going on there, Chuck, and that catches us up. 
Very good. And uh, I see that um, Stacia had an interesting comment. And again, that uh, because of the work from home, VPN, our remote desktop and all, that uh, their school wouldn't able, they couldn't do emailing from within student manager uh, from the regular email uh, launching while they are working from home and that they've been having uh, to send it through Office 365, uh, copying and pasting the email um, on there. I believe, Stacia, we did something for uh, Mass Copy Name Instructor. We did something for uh, Gina about copying all of the emails from a class, comma-separated email group. Uh, Sharon, if you can, I don't know if anybody else uh, has a need to copy all of the emails in a comma-separated mode from the class, um, but uh, you might shoot Matthew a note and Sharon, see if he remembers what we did for uh, Metro to copy a list of all of the emails, comma separated, from a given class. And I, I'm having a brain uh, email waitlisted, email canceled, send quick email, email. Okay, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not catching it. So it had to do with uh, a, a shortcut key that would just paste all of the emails or copy all the emails for students from one particular class. Okay, I'm checking with him. All right. Um, yeah, I, um, and again, so we'll, uh, we'll circle back to that in a bit here. So, all right, let's jump back to the next item on the list, and that is receipts. And, and again, we've already kind of gone over this with uh, the idea of wherever you put that Zoom credential, uh, you can add it to your initial receipt. Again, that's assuming you do the booking ahead of time. If you want to choose to not post or you actually like a real class, you're not gonna go ahead and call the instructor and get the room prepped unless you have the class minimum met. So you don't book a Zoom class until after the class has been held. I guess in that case, obviously, in your receipt that you would be sending the student, you would put in that initial receipt, uh, you know, uh, Zoom uh, credentials will be emailed to you within five days of the start of the class, uh, you know, once class minimum has been met, blah, 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 whatever you want to say on that and then use either the course reminder or use that mass class, um, what am I trying to say? The mass email to the class and send that out. Um, so again, and ditto as we talked about course reminders to be able to go and, uh, and be able to do that. So let me do that as Stacia has actually given me uh, help here. So let me see. Uh, so if we do control T. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I, we do have it and it's not in the help guide control. Oh, there it is. I'm sorry. I, I looked over it. Everybody, if you're back on, pay attention now. This is the time to pay attention. If you'll hit F1, this has been in for several weeks, several months, actually. If you hit F1 and look at Control T, what Control T does is copy all of the emails of the students in a given class. And what it does, I'm going to close this now, is that you can, it copies it to your your clipboard. It doesn't write it anywhere. It copies it to your clipboard. So if you go in and paste, bada boom, it will give you a comma separated list of every student in the class. So if you want to copy that, if you have a reason that you need to go to a third party mail system and send everybody in the class an email, or for that matter, 
I suppose you could use the Zoom invite. I don't know if anybody tr can try this, but try the Zoom invite. You might be able to paste all of the emails from the class into the Zoom invite in one click. Uh, so anyway, uh, yes, uh, Stacia, thank you for uh, pulling my memory and, and I was just not noticing that on the form. Um, okay. So the receipts, the reminders, let's go on and see uh, what are some other ideas that I think you can use uh, if you haven't already. Uh, one is fee limits, and I think this is this issue. I'm going to assume that one of these days, knock on wood, cross our heart, hope to die, we will be allowed by governors and presidents to be able to have face-to-face uh, -face classes. But uh, with there will probably be some caveats in there about the, the capacity of the room is going to be some percentage of what the old fire marshal rule is. Uh, so what will happen is that you could have up to X divided by three. So instead of 10, you can only have three physical students in a classroom. Uh, 20, seat, 20 seats in the class, you could divide by three and have six uh, seats. Uh, but you're going to, you can't run a class for, for three or six. So the idea, thanks, Stein. So the idea is that you would have parallel registration systems in the class. So that what you could do is use the challenges how to, boy, I'm clicking how to limit the in-class size, but allow more or unlimited people in the virtual? And the answer is the new fee limits option. So when you're setting up a class that's a hybrid class, you would have an in-class registration fee of however much you wanna charge. And you say the class size was 15, uh, the room size is 15, Fire marshal or governor says you can have one third the capacity, so we can only have five noses in the class, but we're going to want to allow up to X number of people coming in via Zoom and be able to uh, register extra people and hopefully get your budget to where it needs to be. Uh, so, anyway, that is. Um, um, that is something uh, that I think you'll be able to use. Um, to remind you, we covered this in, I think, um, this was the fee limits was uh, a feature that was added several builds ago or three or four months ago, so that it's not new. Um, and one of the things that I wanna clarify is that when you have this set up, the web will respect this. So when students are registering online, before the in-class seats are filled, they'll see in-class X amount, Zoom class X amount. When that in-class fifth seat is filled, the Zoom class registration option disappears from the web. And the only registration option is Zoom. So web, AceWeb handles that just by itself. Um, if you're doing registrations from student manager and you're taking people phone calls or walk-ins or mail-ins, um, if that ever happens anymore, uh, when you register for the class and hit the limit, um, you can pick obviously which fee you're going to assign that student to indicate Zoom and not Zoom. And um, the, the deal is that when you have those fees set up, um, as uh, when you send to the instructor the quick report, uh, send email roster to instructor, um, paid status special needs. I thought we had registration fee description on here. Reg note. Hmm. Uh, paid status, um, I was just gonna say, in the email to the instructor, we're gonna need to add, and I'll talk to Matthew, we'll get this on the wish list, add the registration fee description. 
So the point is, we're going to deselect all. We're going to done. Do you want to do this? No, no, cancel. There we go. Um, like when you're on student list, uh, you can see the registration fee description, fee category. There it is. In class, in class, in class. So that basically we will add the fee category to those user defined fields that you can choose to add uh, for a class that is a hybrid class. So the, the point is, so the instructor will be able to see which student they, they will expect to see eyeballs for and which students they're gonna be behind that uh, video camera that'll be streaming this class. Um, as it's going on. So, um, I, Sharon, how are we doing questions? Answers? You're answers. doing fine. Brittany has a question, but I need to talk with Matthew a little bit be before. All right. Um, I do want to uh, let you know Stein confirmed that any data field from the course is available to put on your registration confirmation. And again, that's both from ACE Web and from Student Manager. So again, um, if you do want to keep using course notes for notes, you know, park behind the class, behind room 45 for on-class participants and web registrants, make sure you have a high-speed internet, whatever you want to say, <clears throat> you can continue to do that and you could choose to use the reminder note or for that matter, if you can, if you've got space in some of the other user-defined data fields, you can certainly use those. So, um, all right, back to the fee limits. Any questions about that fee limits? Any? I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you. How many of you are using fee limits right now? Anybody already started using those? Fee limits. <laughs> Excuse me. Have <laughs> Emma, Emma, Rita. Emma, Rita, good. Got a couple. So, um, <clears throat> pardon me. I'm getting. I'm gonna take a drink of coffee. All right. Next one. What are some of the challenges that you've got now in serving the isolated students? Well, let me make sure that we've got. Okay, we're gonna go back to that. Uh, keeping them informed, getting them study material getting forms from them. And again, uh, this is where <clears throat> I'm gonna be again, trying to quiz you on some things you might be doing to help with that. Keeping them informed again, uh, I mean, that's just a matter of, <clears throat> that's just a matter of using the tools. And again, um, if you're able to use the integrated tools within Student Manager, Obviously, you've got the class quick email. Uh, you can do the, the 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 merge mail option where you're doing mailing labels, and this is a live system mass email launcher where you're sending out emails from inside of Student Manager uh, in a mass basis. Say everybody in the entire term. Certainly, um, on some of those mass elements, if you've got email chimp or constant contact, use the heck out of those. That's exactly what it's for. So, so I have uh, a question uh, here. You had a question I, answered, I, have, Ellen? I do. Nancy has a question for the audience here. Can you guys share uh, what you've been doing to get study materials to the distant students? So as Chuck talks, you might talk, type in some of what you've been doing to get materials to your students, and I can share some of the ideas with Nancy. Okay, um, I will, yeah, my, my indication on this in terms of study material is that one of the things you have within manager's basic tool set is that in the course setup, um, you can actually reference documents, and I think Jill maybe does this with her confirmations, you can actually link to a document. So if I had a document that I wanted to send this text file to every person who registers for this class, you can have it added as, a, as an attachment to their confirmation and both ACEWeb and Student Manager 
will do that. Now I'm trying to think, Nancy's got a certain, you've got a unique situation with your third party element. So this probably wouldn't work. But what you could do is from the quick reports, send quick email to class, which gets you through this normal setup. Um, uh, close this. You can add attachments to a broadcast email to the class. So again, you could send out, again, five days before the class, a quick email to the class with an attachments list. Now, if you're doing this, um, certainly one of the, you can obviously edit and paste in text into this open form class email. But the other thing you can do is utilize the merge mail option where you can actually create merge mails. And again, I don't know that I've got in this particular demo SETI here, this was a merge mail we actually built for a um, client. Uh, but the idea is that with a merge mail option, you could actually uh, put in a common text here, you know, say, well, thank you for registering for class, insert name of class. Uh, here are your supporting materials that you need to read, blah, 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 blah. I see kind of a common form that is personalized to the class, and then you would be able to add the attachments. I don't believe you can mass pre-assign attachments to a merge mail doc, and because you'd probably have a generic merge mail for document uh, distribution, but then each different class would perhaps have different documents to include. So again, using merge mail would save you having to type in kind of the hugs, hi, how are you? We are great, good to see you. Here's a class that the class name is. If you're typing all that, look at setting up a merge mail. And again, your tech can help you do that. Or you could go back to the conference, you could go back to the conference website and look at Matthew and Lindsay's webinars from Wednesday on creating mass emails. So again, that is something that uh, would be in there. Any other yep. responses from folks? Yeah, yeah, we do have some responses. Um, some Nikki is saying that some of their instructors email the materials before the class begins. Rachel says they send handouts and Zoom link to registered students a couple of days before the class starts. Um, Kristen says they uh, even make appointments sometimes to meet students individually at the office if needed. And we have another one that said the same thing. Um, Brittany says they email materials to them and also they can come by the office and an employee with mask gloves on and stuff takes those materials to them. Leslie says they just email the PowerPoints and handouts right before class begins. There's a lot of people saying, you know, they're using PDFs with receipts. Some and Leslie says they get cancellations sometimes, so they wait until right at the last minute before sending and send them along with reminders. Rachel, they use quick reports, record. Um, textbooks. Jamie says um, they work with their textbook vendors and uh, purchase ebook codes, and those codes are distributed to students to access before the class. So, lots of different things going on out there, Chuck. All right. Now, there was a question that Brittany asked earlier uh, was on this Control T, this yep, business. Yep. Has yep. Copy. yep. I talked to, yeah, it does copy waitlisted. She wanted to know on Control T, does it copy only the actual registered students or copy the canceled and waitlisted? And Matthew says right now it's copying everything, the canceled and waitlisted as well. Okay, now okay, I'm now going, I'm, in the, for the client, we made that for yeah. cancellations. You got to echo shut cancellations and wait lists uh, wasn't a big deal. I'm going to ask you, raise your hand if you'd like an option on that control T to exclude canceled and waitlisted people. So that we just say only bona fide registered. Yep. Okay, so yep. we've got a wish list for uh, math. Yep. 
And that should be easy enough to do that when you do control T it asks include cancel. Actually, we could ask include canceled or include waitlist um, um, as, as two questions. So that should be an easy fix. And uh, again, great suggestion. So, all right, we're, I thought I'd run out of uh, material before time. Um, so anyway, good ideas on study materials. How about getting stuff from the remote students into you. Well, um, document upload has been a feature in Manager in a kind of limited mode for several several months, actually. It's been probably over a year. Um, ma uh, there was a webinar we did on that. It is actually in a Webinar Archive. Uh, let me see if I can do this. Webinar Archive, document upload. Now, one of the things that we are doing is quite a bit of enhancements to that that will be coming out probably in the next build um, that will give you more control over that. I do wanted to show you though um, that Lee College is currently using it as it is now and so the idea is that when you've enabled this on the student's profile, um, now again you can add uploads from both the um, student profile and from the supplemental data page on a given class. So obviously, you know, maybe kids classes, you need to upload a health form for the seniors who are taking an OLLI class. You don't care, no, you do care, but they don't need the health form. So you would click on attachments, um, then it would say what type of file you wanna send. Uh, you would browse the file. I don't know, there's a picture and enter a description test file, upload file, and it'll say, oh, I'm not logged in because I had been logged in and then logged out. Well, but the process would have worked the same. I, it timed me out. I logged in before we got into uh, the session. But anyway, that would be an, that's an example of a live one only the student here had timed out because I wasn't logged in. All right. So that is an option. Um, stay tuned for more uh, detail on that uh, with more flexibility. So that will be coming or go to the webinar archive and watch that webinar that uh, Jason did a week or, or a couple of months ago. And we talk about some of the new features that we're working. Okay, well, you've been great in terms of offering uh, comments and suggestions. Lots and lots of questions in here. Um, Sharon, are we missing any that weren't kind of general notes that we've already covered? Nope, I have not. All right. Uh, well, then uh, we got five minutes or so before I turn it back to Sharon to do the benediction and safe travels uh, between you and the restroom and your coffee cup. Um, any other, uh, uh, what other things are you doing that we haven't talked about or hasn't been shared? that has kind of helped you in this quote new normal so uh, thoughts um ideas um tips um uh, several several good ones kind of as we've gone in mm -hmm. Kristen, Stacia made a really good comment at the very beginning of the session that was that i was saving towards the end um that really putting yourself in the place of the user um, and to understand what they need and that's always a good one. I had a mentor when I first started in continuing education that was their comment to me. Put yourself in the place of the student and things will go really well and so I agree Stacia. She said she also thinks they do a lot more collaborating so a few silver linings there. Very good. I, uh, I have a couple of notes that I see Kristen made the comment about picking up materials that uh, make appointments with students and uh, hand them out at the office. Uh, Brittany does the same and they uh, they make sure that whoever hands out the material is using a mat, the employee has mask and gloves to try to do the, uh, you know, the, the contamination business. Um, other, um, Jill is saying that, um, sharing online classes with other community ed groups with a 50-50 revenue split. So again, if you've got a delivery system that you've got set up and maybe some other 
YMCA or some of these others may not have those. Offer to offer that service, if you would, as a on a on a 50/50 fee split basis like you would do perhaps with a department in campus for you on campus people great suggestion jill anybody else have again um, methods of delivery or if you're using something besides zoom uh, anybody using something that's not you know a campus canvas or blackboard that they find to be good anybody using Google Meet. I know Google is advertising Meet a lot. Anybody using Google Meet? Uh, type in a type in a note or Linda. Linda says, uh, oh, "No, that wasn't Google Meet." Uh, oh, oh, a couple. Guadalupe Lee is uh, Google Meet. So, um, any other, the other uh, Microsoft Teams? Microsoft, Microsoft Teams. Thank you, Microsoft Teams. Um. WebEx. Oh, interesting. Google Meet and Google Classroom. Linda uses Google Classroom as well. So, um, well, I'm going to, um, I guess, get to the point now where I think um, there was a couple conference leftovers that we wanted to add before we turn this over to Sharon. A, a great session. Yeah. Yeah. Do uh, Stein, do you have a, a thought, a comment? Did you no, want to make I, a I just need to correct. I misled you earlier about using that non-printing note field. I had to uh, give a quick look at the code. I thought it was in there and I realized, no, currently it is not, but it will be in the conference release of AceWeb, the ability to use that field. Very good, very good. So, guys, the conference and Stein, what's your? Have you got an ETA? I know you're 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 finishing up, polishing off, doing some testing. You want to give this crew a quick uh, ballpark of an ETA on that? I think you better not expect it for uh, at least uh, ten days. Okay, uh, sometime in the next couple of weeks. By okay. the end of the month, for sure, but... Uh, end of the month, for because, sure, middle of the month, uh, hopefully. So, yeah. We've got a bunch of work, and Jason has to do the whole testing routine, and you know we don't want to put it out there until we know it's good. So. Gotcha, gotcha. So, um, all right. Well, um, so again, we will have that option to use the um, internal notes for AceWeb. I'm pretty sure student manager with the email confirmation can do it right now. Okay, uh, there was a question about how the wish list system, uh, we use that. And, and uh, we're, we're writing down wish lists from your comments as we speak, but we actually do have a system in place for that. And if I can find on all of my notes here where it is, here we go. I think this is the one, here we go wish list we have a google doc and basically what we do is as we get great ideas from people we'll put it in the doc indicate who requested it so that if there is a reason we want to or if we'd like to get more detail we can go back to the contact and check that out uh, put in the wish indicate the scope and indicate the priority and the difficulty and and again uh, we cannot promise that will be able to deliver on all the wish lists, but we try to write them down. Uh, and again, um, as time permits, we will try to get to those. Um, and obviously it, it does need to be something that we feel has general uh, applicability to uh, multiple students or multiple programs. So that is the uh, wish list. Uh, one, my last comment again, and and I want to I want to do the shout out. We don't do a lot of self promotion. Uh, we we kind of think that you know if we uh, uh, if we do the right thing, people will notice that. But uh, it's like you can't hide your light under a bushel. You've got to share uh, Aceware with other people. And again, we're always looking to serve new clients, new schools. So if you know of a colleague that you've talked to uh, that's struggling with trying to track students and uh, register students online, let them know about Aceware. We love to have references and um, we will um, be happy to follow up with them on that. So with that, Sharon, I'll let you um, do the benediction here. So. 
Okay. Well, I knew this would be kind of a, a thought-provoking session, and so I did most of my um, most of my announcements up front. I can't even hardly make myself the presenter now to do a final screenshot here. I should give a shout out to the Criminal Justice Institute in Arkansas. Norm, your team won the 60 to 90 minutes. <laughs> Yay. Training session, Yay. kind of perfect Yay, no, timing no, no. for them. Um, and do watch your email for some follow-up to the conference notes. And I'm loving all the comments. Thank you very much, Rita, Emma. Appreciate all of those uh, positive comments about your week with us. With that, hopefully you're doing your happy dance for Friday and you can enjoy a wonderful weekend and rest up before next week. We thank you again for joining us. Thanks, Chuck, for a, a good interactive session, and stay in touch, everyone. Uh, e master conference evaluation. Uh, I was going to... Yep, yep, it'll be in that follow-up email. Mm -hmm. okay, very good, it'll very good. It'll be in that follow-up email. There's a lot of things that have gone on, and so it's better if you get all of those links and things and kind of a follow-up next week. So that's all I have other than um, have a good weekend. We missed seeing you, but it was fun to get together this week anyway. We'll hope you to get together again in the near future. Chuck, with that, I'm going to let everybody go unless you have anything else to share. I, I love you all. Be good, be safe, and we hope to see you in person. We're going to try Savannah 2021. Uh, stay healthy, wash your hands, and we'll get back together. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye, all. Everybody.